Hello and welcome to another edition of Your County at Work, the show that brings you to the front line of hardworking men and women of Newcastle County government. I am your host, Wayna Dobson, and today I am happy to tell you that Carla, Eileen, Kathy, and Suzanne from the Department of Finance are in the NCC TV studio today to talk about their job responsibilities as liaisons. Thank you so very much, ladies, for being here today. Thanks for having us. Y'all doing all right? Okay, all right. So we get to talk about like the important part of the county, which is the finances. So Carla, we'll start with you if you would introduce yourself to our viewing audience. Hi, Wayna. Thanks for having me. You're today. welcome. My name is Carla Jones Milton, and I work in the Department of Public Safety Finance Office, and I am the finance officer for public safety. Okay, and you've been with the county for how long? I've been with the county 13 years. Okay. And three of those years have been with public safety. Okay, all right. Eileen? Hi, Wayne again. Thank you for You're having welcome. us. Um, well, my name is Eileen Latham. I am the Department Finance Officer for Community Services. Um, I've been with the county for 17 years. Okay, all right. Kathy. Hello. Hi, Kathy. I'm Kathy DeCristo Farrell. I'm the finance officer for the Department of Special Services. I've been with the county 17 years, and, and I started out in the Department of Finance before moving to the Department of Special Services. Okay. Hi, Brina. Hi, Susan. Um, I'm Susanna Pusek, and I am the Department of Finance officer for the Department of Land Use. And uh, this month marks my 15th anniversary with Newcastle County. Happy anniversary. Well, I'm excited cause, and I'm, because it's like all women. <laughs> I'm like, we, women rock. <laughs> all right. So, um, Carla, you said that you've been in public safety for three, three years. years. So you started out where? I actually started out um, in the Department of Finance Okay. Um, as a budget and procedures analyst. I actually did that for 10 years. Okay, all right. And so, Eileen, you work with community service. So yes. there you deal with finances, dealing with like grants and... We do um, grants. We Most of our grant money comes from HUD, federal okay. government. In fact, half of our staff are federally funded positions. Um, we also get money from the state, because mainly our... Uh, Grant monies, the largest percentage of our grant monies are um, geared towards um, low-income housing, helping okay. low-income residents repair their homes and buy houses in targeted communities. Okay. Now, I have to put this plug in. I know that the Route 9 um, area is a very important area for County Executive Thomas Gordon. And I believe one of the things that you all do is, I know there's a few houses in the community of Dunleaf that are um, being redone for homeowners to purchase, is that true? Um, we just received uh, two grants from the state of Delaware, One geared, uh, both of them geared to residents that live along the Route 9 corridor. Um, one grant is to help them make, um, to purchase homes, mm -hmm. the other is to, the other grant, it will be a loan program that will help low-income residents in those air, in that area um, do repairs to their homes to make to bring them up to code. Okay. And that's and, but overall we do that throughout the county. But that particular those particular grants are geared just for that community. Okay. And I have to put another plug in for county executive because it's important to him for everyone to be able to afford to to in a home. So um, I'm so grateful for that initiative that you all are doing. Kathy, you work with a lot of capital monies. I do. <laughs> we have a $154 million active capital budget right now. Um, we, we are taking care of the Route 9 library. We do the construction. Okay. While her, uh, I mean's department gets some of the grants and uh, other funding mm -hmm. that is in bond money. Um, and we, I have the engineers and I have um, the project manager. So our department takes care of, or fiscal takes care of paying the bills, making sure that the purchase orders are correct, you know, 
dot me eyes. Okay. The T's. All right. <laughs> okay. And Eileen, you're. Um, I apologize. I just spoke to Eileen. Suzanne, your main focus is dealing with land use. Land use, yes. Okay. We have um, five divisions in our department planning, engineering, uh, licensing, which is building permits and inspections, and uh, code enforcement, which is an important function for keeping our communities safe and attractive mm -hmm. and preserving property values, and then our administration. But um, to your comment about Route 9 area, the um, department is also working on a, a corridor revitalization plan for Route 9. and looking at planning walkable communities so that people who live in the area can have a safe walkway mm -hmm. to get to the innovation center. Okay. So it's all, we're all working together. Yeah, so I like that. Even though you are all in different departments, different locations, that it like all comes together. I mean, each piece is a piece of the puzzle to come together to make everything work out. So let's talk about like, a daily routine. How was like your daily day? Would you come in and what happens? Well, first I would like to talk a little bit about what public safety does because okay. I didn't mention that earlier. But um, the Department of Public Safety houses the police division, mm -hmm. the EMS division, which would be the paramedic service, um, the 911 service, um, which would be the 911 dispatchers and also um, the Office of Emergency Management. So I actually supervise the, the fiscal office that provides all of the financial services for those divisions. So on a daily basis, um, I manage four staff and the staff takes care of our payroll for all of our employees in, in the department, mm -hmm. which is roughly um, 660 people. So we do the payroll for all of the employees for public safety. We do the accounts payable, and which would be paying the bills. And we also set up purchase orders, and um, we manage grants. Okay. And also we put together the annual budget for both the operating and also the capital budget. OK. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and you said it all in one breath. <laughs> All right. What is a typical day for you? Um, following along with um, what Carla has said, I do do the fiscal processes for the Department of Community Services. We touched on um, one source of uh, funding for us, which is HUD, the, mm -hmm. the, where we do a lot of our um, housing programs. We also um, do give get HUD funds and we give them to nonprofits that are doing programming that is that fits along with what HUD's initiatives are. And then we have um, operating funds where we use those funds to uh, run what well, ten county libraries, three no five, I'm sorry, five um, contractual libraries and we have sports programs, summer rec programs, um, activity centers where you can take a class and you don't have to go to a gym to take a yoga class or something like that. You can come to one of our activity centers. Uh, we have a museum and we also have Carousel Park mm -hmm. where it's just a small little zoo mm -hmm. with uh, um, public safety um, Clydesdale horses are housed. and. Those, those, we, we do all the fiscal processes for all of those programs. We have a staff of 11, and it's our department's very interesting, like I said earlier, because half of the staff are um, grant funded and the other staff are operating. Okay, all right, thank you. Kathy, how about you? I'm a little different than these guys. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we have the sewer department, and then I have the general fund department, mm -hmm. so I actually have two different types of funding that that I deal with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, I have a staff of seven, and again, we do, we pay the bills, we do the purchase orders, uh, we're moving money all the time, and moving money means it's in contractual and it really needs to be in supplies, um, the way we budget, and mm -hmm. it just hasn't, it's just not there, so we can okay. move it to where it belongs. Um, we do have very minor grants, not, not a lot, um, but our department, um, so as I said, the sewer side, we have environmental compliance that so we deal with all the environmental issues. And then on the general fund side, we have the parks, we have fleet operations, we have engineering, 
Um, so I have a very diverse mm -hmm. group of um, individuals and different needs. And then payroll, I deal with some of the personnel issues that go on. Okay. And, uh, making sure that everybody's paid on time. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's important. We also do all the snow removal for the, for the county. Okay. So a couple storms that we've had mm -hmm. have been a very, very busy department. Yes, okay. And Suzanne, you? Well, we start our day pretty much um, getting all our receipts from the prior day into the bank. And we gather up all the checks and cash and credit card payments and we reconcile them and then we get them to the bank at the earliest possible time the next morning. And that, you know, that's a few hours of work. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and then we have the same general responsibilities as well, you know, supervising. I guess oversight is probably the word mm -hmm. for the function um, in terms of payments and purchase orders and accounts payable and all that. So, um, but a big chunk of our day is, is um, the receipts. Okay. All right. I know we talked about quite a few things. Is there anything that I left out that I, that you would like to tell our viewing audience? Anyone? Um, well, I, I think that one area that might be of interest to the audience would be our code enforcement department okay. because they, they reach out to all the neighborhoods and their function is to help keep our communities clean and safe. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, they, they operate on a complaint-driven basis. So if we have a phone call, we get a phone call or an email, which anyone is you know, more than welcome to do. Um, and some of the uh, violations could be for high weeds and grass, trash and debris, uh, 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 structures that are, look unsafe. Mm -hmm. Um, and our inspectors, our code officers, will go out and perform an inspection, and they will issue a violation if they find one. And then there's a whole process that, that, that is followed. Um, civil penalty may be issued to encourage the property owner to make the corrections. And uh, finally, if everything all else fails, the county will go out and make the corrections in the neighborhood okay. and bring the properties up to code compliance, then the property owner is mm -hmm. does get an invoice for that. Okay. So that, uh, you know, we don't do this for charity. Right, <laughs> gotcha. We are, we're working, you know, if they don't do it, we want to keep the properties clean and happy right. and keep okay. the neighborhoods. I like so, that if the property owner doesn't, that we correct the problem so that it will keep our communities beautified. So. And I, I would just mention that the phone number for complaints mm -hmm. is 302-395-5555. So if you feel there's an issue in your neighborhood, feel free to call. Thank you for adding that, mm -hmm. most definitely. All right, I want to encourage our viewers, if you would go to our Facebook page and like us. And we also want to thank um, County Executive Tom Gordon for allowing us to come here today to talk about um, what you ladies do for the county. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to a conclusion of another episode of Your County at Work. I hope you learned something today. Please keep in tune to NCC TV to learn more about your local government, Newcastle County. For County Executive Thomas P. Gordon, this is Wayna Dobson signing off until next time.